All right, hello everyone, and welcome back to Cotabo Space Program. And today, oh, we're going to be having a little bit of experimental fun. Is earlier in the day, I was just poking around on Reddit as I do on occasion, and oddly enough, where I get most of my ideas for things on here. Uh, but one of the things that I saw was some cool new boat designs. And so I wanted to return to the ocean today. Now, if you remember long ago, oh god, what was that thing named? Ah, the Nautic Mark I. Here we are. This was the very, very crappy little boat I made quite a long time ago with its wonderful launch vehicle to get it to the ocean and then engines to uh, propel it in the water, and it worked! It worked decently, but not extraordinarily well. <laughs> it, float, it floated in the water, but it uh, basically just kind of gently meandered down the coastline. It really, it really couldn't go very far, and the engines I used were just way too... Oh, what's the term? I'll, I'll just call them gas guzzlers. They just... Oh man, they just suck down fuel quick. Even with these four tanks of fuel, it just... It did not go well. We, we didn't really have a whole lot of buoyancy. The thing went far too low in the water, and the engines weren't great for it, and so it did not work well. But I saw someone's design on... Actually, several different people's designs on Reddit recently. Where they used... Oh, actually, let's just keep in here real quick. Uh, which tab is it under? I always forget. There we go. They used these radial air intakes on the bottom of their boats like that to add extra buoyancy, because apparently these things are actually pretty buoyant, and they've got a pretty good impact tolerance, and they hold onto the ship quite well. So they, they, you don't really have to worry about them falling off as you go through the water, and I was intrigued by this. So what I did is built two little boats that I'm hoping to test today. Uh, the probably poorly little named Scout Boat. Look at this thing. It's just... Oh god, it's actually kind of hideous. <laughs> it's really simple, just a nice little lander can there. We're using these sort of radial decoupl- oh, what is the exact name? I am- I am awful with names. Let's go to it. Oh yeah, it is just radial decoupler. Ha! Alright, so yeah, we have two of these kind of going off to the side to get the pontoon sort of feel, but only two small ones and just the jet fuel tanks because we're going to be using jet engines, which are much more fuel efficient. And then I've got four of these radial air intakes on the bottom, and I'm wanting to see how well this little thing floats. I have no idea how it's gonna go. I, I built this one and the other boat basically right before starting the episode. So I honestly have no idea how these things are going to go in the slightest. Let's switch out to Bill for a Ribri. That's an odd name. Actually, I don't know if I want him. Oh, we gotta go with Chuck Kerman. There we go, excellent. I, uh, after the last mission where I used up most of my people, I uh, went to the recruitment center and grabbed some more Kerbals. So we are good to go for more crew. And hopefully, Chuck Kerman can handle this beast. Now, it doesn't have motorized wheels. I went with the landing gear because, well, we do have these jet engines. So I'm hoping to just kind of keep a little bit of throttle on the jet engines to propel this thing to get it all the way to the ocean. So we're going to do a save. And launch this puppy! Come on. There we go. And I'm gonna fast forward as I drive this to the ocean because, yeah, it's just a short drive. So we're just gonna fast forward it from here and I'll see you guys in a second.
Okay, and we are in the water, and ooh, ooh, I need more counterweights on this thing. <laughs> we are, we are tilting back pretty good there. Now you may have noticed our very wonky <laughs> drive down the runway on that fast forward. We oh man, it, this is not easy to control because it is just landing gear. I mean, this landing gear is not exactly made for a whole lot of control in this game. So yeah, let's just raise the landing gear, which uh, is useless to us now, and give this baby a little bit of throttle. That should lift up the back a bit more. Here we go. You know what? This is actually going pretty well. Woo! Okay, that's... That is some noise there. Alright, we're going pretty nice. Oh, that's way too fast, though. That is way too fast. Let's throttle this baby down. Just a tiny bit of throttle. And, oh, how much control do we have on this thing? Not a whole lot. And, oh my god, this is loud. I'm really going to have to turn down the volume when I get into post-processing this video. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> it's just water everywhere. We're just spraying up a whole lot of water on this thing. All right. Man, I need to turn down my own volume. Jeez, okay, there we go. Now I can actually hear. <laughs> Thank God for headsets with their own volume controls. But there does not seem to be a whole lot of control with this thing. We're keeping a really nice steady pace of about 15.8-ish meters per second. We seem to dip down to 0.7 and up to 0.9. But yeah, not a whole lot of control. I mean, we're going in a straight line and... I've had my finger down on the D key for quite a while now, and we're not really turning in any direction. I wonder if I let go, will it start to turn? No, no, it's not doing anything. It's just continuing on forward, so oh, that might be a problem with this boat. Got good buoyancy. It's got good speed, better speed than my original boat design a long, long ago. But I don't really know how much these radial intakes are really helping this boat. Because, it, well, it is small and they are down below. But this thing is, well, it is going quite well. Though I think the radial engines are what's causing all of the water to splash up constantly. Because it seems to actually go in patterns of, like, four. And there's four along the bottom. It's like, da 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 as it goes along, and oh, it's kind of alternating. That's kind of cool, actually. I like that. <laughs> yeah, this is... Huh, this is an interesting boat. It floats, and it goes. It goes quite well. It throttled down just a little. Let's bring the throttle up a bit, see if maybe we have more control. Because these are vectoring engines. They've got a little bit of a gimbal to them. And... Oh, actually, it's going more smoothly now. And apparently, if I, well, I thought I had a little bit of steering going there, but it seems to go back to center. That could be an issue. So even if I do, oh no, wait, 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 we are turning. Yeah, we do seem to be, t oh, no, no, we're going back to center. I, I have, I'm not touching the controls right now. And it's just kind of going back and forth at the moment. <laughs> Oh, okay, okay. It really went way over there. Oh, it's getting kind of worse. All right, all right. Let's see if we can get this... Let's see if we can actually get this thing under control. Ah, oh, you know what? I think we are. Uh, it's not heading back to center now. Okay, so if you get at... Oh, 50 meters per second. I did not actually realize we were going that fast in this boat. <laughs> Once you get it up to higher speeds, you do seem to have a bit more control. Ooh, ooh, though it is still finicky. This thing wants to go all over the place. Oh, man. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Nope, nope, nope. Back the other way. I want to go towards the island. Oh, God. This thing is just moving all over the place. It's like trying to control a car on really, really, uh, really slippery road. It's just... Oh, God. Okay, we need to throttle this baby down. <laughs> oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> Oh, wow. Okay, this is kind of a cool little boat, but man, is it difficult to control. Because the only way to control it is to be at higher speeds, it seems. But then it kind of 
goes a little bit out of control. At low speeds... Oh, that might be how to drive this thing. You go to high speed to get to the angle you want to be at, and then turn it down to low speed to keep going straight. So let's get it up to a higher speed again. Try and aim ourselves at the island base over here. Come on, a little bit more. A little bit more. Perfect. Oh, too much. Too much. Oh, way too much. Oh, we're drifting. <laughs> oh, oh god. <laughs> Okay, well, oh wow, that uh, that debris kind of went away. So let's really see if we can follow it. Oh, that radial intake's going pretty nicely. It's gone quite far from the rest. Oh, I think it's fine. I lost its momentum. <laughs> okay, well, that mission didn't go so well. Let's. Uh, Let's revert it to the space plane hangar so I don't lose that Kerbal. <laughs> okay, so that boat, finicky, but it does seem to work. The radial engines, I honestly don't know how much of a difference it actually made with the buoyancy of this design because those pontoons probably did about the same amount of work for it. So, let's move on to test design the number two. Alright, now that was the wing boat. <laughs> this one was de the big sort of, wow, I have to make something like this. I saw on Reddit someone who basically made a giant carrier using this principle of these wings with radial intakes at the bottom. Three radial intakes, sort of like that, though they did a much better design. A much better uh, at lining it all up than I did. <laughs> yeah, he had a whole load of these supporting platforms that he had like little airplanes on and things like that. I'll actually put a link to it in the description. It was a really, really cool craft. And I wanted to try mine on a smaller scale, though I don't know about having that up high like that. Let's actually. Oh, no, no, no. That's, that's not going to work. Let's just take that off and plop you there. There we go. <laughs> and well, of course since this thing has the wings, we couldn't do like the landing gear or attaching any wheels to this. So we had to make a sort of frame system like we did for our previous boat. And I had to add some struts here because well, I learned with my previous boat design, it tends to bow in the middle. And I don't want these scraping along the bottom, so I'm hoping that the that this one strut to each wing keeps it from doing that, but I'll admit I don't know for sure. So, let's take out Bill, put Chuck back in. Good old Chuck, he'll he'll be testing these out for us today. And let's head out back out to launch. Here we go. Loading. Loading. There we are. Okay, 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 it's not bowing in the center. I, that that makes me happy. Though, like most of my wheel designs, eh, kind of a narrow wheelbase. Oh, God. <laughs> or not wheelbase, but uh, what's it called, the distance between the wheels along the side? I, I, the wheelbase is, like, distance width-wise, correct? Someone correct me if I'm wrong here. I don't want to be using the wrong terms. But yeah, let's just, these wheels are powered, unlike the previous one, because I don't want to risk <laughs> the engine on this thing with uh, how high it is. So yeah, I'm going to fast forward again. Actually, you know what, before I do anything, let's, oh god, <laughs> I'm going to quick save because yeah, I have a feeling I may tip this thing over and I may have to do this drive several times. So yeah, I'm going to fast forward from here. Okay, and we are in the water, and wow, these uh, these radial in 
intakes actually really are buoyant. Look at that. We are, even with all the weight of the frame for the wheels, we're pretty much where I was hoping this thing would be floating, though I thought with the wheels it would be lower. Oh. Oh, God, I just realized something. Uh, yeah, like I said, <laughs> I built these right before filming, or starting to film the episode. I didn't really think through my decoupling plan. Huh. These are gonna fall right in the middle. Crap. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna quick save this here real quick, and I'm gonna test what it does in sort of these shallower waters, and maybe if I move out to deeper waters, these will fall to the side and sort of maybe float away a little bit. So let's let's check. Goes like that. Oh, come on, float away. Float away more. Oh god, those are more buoyant than I was hoping. Wow, those are really buoyant. What the How is a girder that buoyant? <laughs> okay. Oh well, alright, let's try and throttle up a little bit on this. Um Alright, there we go with the engines. Just slowly push those out of the way. Okay. It worked! We're free! <laughs> okay, and we are speeding up! Alright, let's see how this thing handles. At the moment, not well. We're going at 10 meters per second at the, at the moment. Oh, uh, yeah, using moment too much there. And uh, again, I'm holding down D, and we're not doing anything. Now, this, uh, yeah, I don't have the gimbal locked. So I'm assuming we're going to need more speed to get this thing to turn in any manner, uh, like previously. Though now it's kind of turning to the left, even though I'm telling it to turn to the right. This isn't good. We're turning around back towards the shoreline. Ah, crap. <laughs> yeah, right now, I'm telling it to turn to the right. It's not. It's not at all. <laughs> okay, how in the world did that guy control this boat with uh, one of these being made of dozens of these? Okay, now I'm trying to turn it to the left. And, well, yeah, we're just still going left. I thought maybe opposites for some strange reason, but no, this... This seems to just want to go around in circles. I appear to have no control over this craft whatsoever. Oh, this is not going well today with these boats. <laughs> the first one went decently, but we just really had no control. This one, I don't know, let's try throttling it up more. To one-third throttle. Come on, come on. Man, this thing is not wanting to be worked on at all. Maybe SAS on? No, that didn't help. It's still just going in a circle. Ah, yeah, right now I'm not touching any keys and we're just going in a circle. And we're getting closer to the land each time we make a circle. Which isn't good. Which isn't good at all. Oh, God. No. Okay, so clearly that Reddit post that I was talking about that guy knows something that I clearly don't. <laughs> I, I am happy that the buoyancy is working as I was hoping it would. These wings with the radial intakes, it is serving as it should. We've got kind of like the winged sort of design for the flotation rather than pontoons. And I like that. But right now, as I said, no matter what I try and how I try to steer, this thing is just going in circles. <laughs> round and round we go. I'm not touching any keys right now, and yeah, we're still going in circles. Huh. Well, it's a boat that's good at doing donuts, and it can do it for quite a long time, because look at that fuel efficiency. <laughs> okay, let's just ramp up the speed all the way, see what the, if that does anything. I'm doubting it will. No, we're still just going in a circle, even though I'm telling it to turn the opposite direction. Our circles are just getting faster and wider. Yeah, this really is not going well. <laughs> oh, we're getting really close to land now. How is this thing still together? Okay, let's just cut the engines. So, the last one, 
it floated. We had a little bit of control, but not much. And it ended up kind of crashing. This one, really, really great flotation. Much better flotation than any of my previous boats. Granted, there have only been two previous boats. All right, let's counteract this for a second just to... There we go. There we go. But, yeah, I've only made two previous boats besides this one, and this one's definitely the best buoyancy-wise, but by far the worst control-wise. So, yeah, if, if you have any suggestions as to how to control one of these darn boats better, I would love to hear it, because at the moment, this... Ah, oh, it floats so well, but dear God, is it... it just... It doesn't do a thing. You cannot control it at all. So, <laughs> if you have any suggestions, I would love to hear it, because I would like to attempt something like the Reddit post, which, again, I'll link to in the description. It was, it's a really cool post. Uh, I would like to do what that guy did. He made a carrier that had two airplanes and two landers with habitat modules, and he floated this thing or, you know, piloted it all the way on the ocean down to the Arctic. And then launch the planes, land them, launch the habitation uh, sort of lander things, and then, you know, got them all together in a nice little base. The boat ended up getting destroyed in the end because of all the engines trying to launch from it. But still, it floated all of those things down to the Arctic, and I would love to try something like that. But at the moment, I, I've got the flotation down. This is working beautifully, but control... Control is what I am lacking. So, yeah, I'd love to hear any suggestions, and I hope you've enjoyed this somewhat pointless but very nautical episode. <laughs> and that you come back for the next, and I actually really like the internal view of this one. It's actually quite cool. If only you could control it nicely. But, yeah, and I hope you come back for the next when we'll be doing something else. I have no idea what, but something. <laughs> But <laughs> thank you for watching, and as always, my friends, have a good one.